Welcome to Sunday Thoughts! Hey you guys! Today our entire lesson is all about a verse that we're going to be learning today and some of you already know it. It goes like this. Therefore, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. And we're going to do a dance so you can learn it even better, but uh, Graham, everybody is going to be talking about this verse today. So make sure you know it. Are you ready to dance? Yes. Let's dance. which is integrity. integrity. Remember what integrity is? It's when you're truthful in what you say and what you do. Last week we saw the pilgrims finally escape the giant despair. Now they're running away and we'll find out what happens next. Can you imagine how surprised that giant despair will be when he wakes up? It will despair that <laughs> we're not there. This isn't the Celestial Kingdom. But look, the path stops here. And then it just disappears. And yet you will still be guided. This is the King's Delectable Mountains. This, this place is a taste of things that are yet to come. 
Hi, kind shepherd. My name is Christian, and you are both. You are both known in your love. Tell me, do we know you? In part, you will be delighted to know that you are now in sight of the celestial kingdom. That is great news. And the rest of the way, is it dangerous? You will not walk this alone. The king will guide you as the shepherd guides. always goes before you, even when he is out of sight. This map will guide you on the rest of your journey. Beware of the flatterer. Do not sleep on enchanted ground. Do not allow yourselves to become locked again in the castle of doubt. You have escaped once, but the giant despair has not given up its search for you. And you must keep the light of the celestial kingdom in your line of sights at all times. We will do as you say, kind shepherd. It's so beautiful. Now, if you please... Where'd he go? He spoke about a map. Did he give it to you? I was about to ask you the same thing. I'm really hoping not to get lost again. Excuse me, fine pilgrims. Might I be of some assistance to you? Are you lost? Whoa, that was really cool. Do you know who that voice was? I don't know. I don't know either. We're gonna have to find out next week. But it was really cool to meet the shepherd. You guys know who the shepherd represented, right? It was supposed to be like Jesus. Jesus comes along in our life and he lets us know important information and he restores our, our confidence and he gives us such so much encouragement and love. Um, speaking of all the good things in life, let's go and hear what Graham has to teach us about this week's lesson. Are you ready? Let's go see Graham. Yes. Here we go. This isn't gonna work. I'm gonna do really bad today. I'm gonna forget what I have to say. I might as well just give up. Hi, I'm Graham and I'm going to fail. Sorry, but I'm just trying to be honest. I'm trying to have integrity. Integrity is choosing to be truthful in whatever you say and do. And the truth is, the speech I have to give later today is going to go badly. I am supposed to talk to a bunch of strangers about different kinds of masks, but every time I give a speech, I get so nervous that everything I want to say comes out wrong. I don't know if this happens to you, but I keep hearing these voices in my head. You're not very good at talking to people. When you tell jokes, they stink. Other people are way better at this than you. The more I listen to these voices, the more I believe them. So it's probably better if I don't even do the speech today. Can't mess up if I don't try, right? That way you won't be embarrassed. Good point, teddy bear voice. So in today's story, we're learning about how to control what you think. <laughs> like that would be helpful. Wait, would that be helpful? No, I mean, <laughs> Aw, thanks for being honest, weird horse voice. I knew I could count on you. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verse 8. Horatio liked to keep track of things in his head. Five kinds of cereal in the cabinet. 
17 braids on his sister Nala's head. Two voicemail messages left on his parents' landline phone. Oh, seriously, Mom? You are so stuck in the 1990s. Horatio was especially good at keeping track of things that went wrong. Number one, we're out of chocolate frosted sugar bomb cereal. Horatio's mother did not always appreciate his lists. I did not buy that. Your dad bought that. Number two, it is freezing in here. Put on a sweater. Number three, Miss Watson is making us do a group project and they are the worst because everyone else drags me down. Horatio, can you please focus on something positive for once? Just keeping it real. Oh, oh, I know about positive stuff. Miss Christie told us. Horatio's little sister Nala began rummaging around in the stacks of random paper on the counter. There is nothing positive about this morning and I'm positive about that. Nala pulled out a scribbled on handout and waved it triumphantly. Philippians 4, 8? Do not read me a coloring sheet. Finally, my brothers and sisters, always think about what is true. Think about what is noble, right, and pure. Mom, make her stop bugging me. No, this is good. Think about what is lovely and worthy of respect. If anything is excellent or worthy of praise, think about those kinds of things. Horatio just glared and checked out the lunch that mom had packed. Is this strawberry jam in my sandwich? You know I only eat apricot jam. Over the next two hours, Horatio counted dozens of annoying things. Number one, this bus stinks like dirty socks stuffed with Cheetos. Number two, the classroom door needs some WD-40. Number three, Miss Watson is wearing yellow and I hate yellow. Number four, this pencil is making a giant callus on my finger. Number five, group projects are still the worst. Number six, it's way too hot over here. And to make matters worse, Miss Watson had put Tish James in charge of the group. Ugh. So, we get to do a report on Cape Hatteras Lighthouse. I'll write the history, and Jordan, you can paint a picture, and Horatio, you research stuff about the land and animals around it. Number seven. Tish is super bossy. Oh, and here's a picture of the lighthouse. Tish held up a glossy photograph and Horatio opened his mouth ready to complain about how boring lighthouses were. But he couldn't do it. Hatteras Lighthouse spiraling into the sunset sky was breathtaking. He could picture walking the beach and waves crashing as the warm light glowed overhead. Ah. Horatio couldn't help hearing an echo of his little sister's voice. Think about what is lovely and worthy of respect. <laughs> there it was, right in front of his face. Horatio found brand new thoughts forming in his brain. Hey, that looks really cool. That's amazing. It was as if a switch had flipped in Horatio's head. After seeing one good thing, he started to see more. Jordan had brought in some paintings he had done. Number one, Jordan, you are a really great artist. Miss Watson helped Horatio solve some tough fractions by drawing a funny sketch. Number two, Miss Watson is a super creative teacher. Mom had packed homemade cookies and Horatio's lunch. Number three, my mom makes the best chocolate chip cookies on the planet. Who wants to share? By the time Horatio got off the school bus. Number four, Mr. Rob drove us right up to our house because of the rain. He was actually smiling. Mom met them at the door. Hey kids, how was school? At that moment, Nala shook out her wet umbrella all over Horatio. And for a moment, Horatio frowned. Nala braced herself. Uh, sorry. Number five, I have a closet full of dry clothes upstairs. Nala's eyebrows shot way up. What happened to you? Nothing. I just realized I've got some pretty great things to focus on. So your day went okay? Number six. It was positively awesome. Horatio beamed and ran upstairs to change his wet shirt. He had a lot of brand new lists to make up in his head. The Apostle Paul wrote, Finally, my brothers and sisters, always think about what is true. 
Think about what is noble, right, and pure. Think about what is lovely and worthy of respect. If anything is excellent or worthy of praise, think about those kinds of things. You know what that means? It means you're in charge of what you think about. Maybe you can't control every single thought that enters your brain. Think about fish. You must think about... But you can control the thoughts that you focus on. <laughs> yes, you can. Having integrity doesn't just mean you're honest with other people. It means you're honest with yourself too. And to do that, you need to try and focus on things that you know are true. Things like, God made you. God forgives you. God loves you. He loves you so much that he sent Jesus to die on a cross for you. And he's big enough to bring Jesus back from the dead. So he's bigger than all of the things that you and I worry about. So the one thing to remember from today is this. Focus on what's true. And if you ever feel like you can't control your thoughts or if the voices inside seem too loud, talk to someone you trust about it. Find someone who will help you stay focused on the truth of God's amazing love for you. You know what? I'm gonna choose not to believe the voices that are telling me that I'm not any good. God made me, I am good. And then I'm going to try to give the best speech that I can. Bet you didn't see that coming, did you? <laughs> I mean, nope. Yeah, yeah, I thought not. I'll see you around, everybody. I'll be thinking about you. Bye. That was such a good lesson. I loved that. And I love thinking about the really wonderful good things that God has given us. Can you think of any good things that God's given you? I love going to school. <gasps> school? Anything else? Going with my family. Family! And, and God, you guys, God has given us so many beautiful promises. What about heaven? Heaven's awesome. What about our sweet church family? They're pretty great too. You guys, I love being family with you. I can't wait to see you next week. See you then. Goodbye. Before the day I took a breath You had a plan for my every step You promised to always be by my side I believe that you are the way You are the truth You are the lie So I sing this to you Okay You keep your promises every Right the way you do You're teaching me to take a stand And live for you Cause I believe that You are the way, you are the truth You are the liar, so I sing this to you Okay You keep your promises every day
Maybe once in a while You cover up an itty bitty lie with a big fat smile But an itty bitty lie still lie and that's not your style Put sit to the middle of the path from mile to mile Maybe you want it real bad so you'd say okay. Maybe you make the promise but then you break it Maybe you didn't learn the words so you fake it And you feel a little low But if instead you move it straight ahead Keeping your promises You'll be living straight up If you move too far to the side Then you're gonna get stuck It might feel like a little lie But it's gonna catch up Do what you say you're gonna do You'll be on your way up Said you're on your way up You'll be living straight up to you.